Hey guys, I'm Marcus. So you've just received your new Airwave. Let's take a look together and get you set up to start making music. In this video, we're gonna go over the unboxing experience, some hardware and software setup, as well as how to use Airwave with both Roly Airwave Player and third-party DAWs and software. We'll also cover some tips and tricks to get the most out of your Airwave playing. Let's get started. So let's take a look at what's included. Airwave comes with everything you need to connect to your existing setup. In the box, you get the Airwave itself, three USB-C cables. These are all different lengths, but the long one is only suited for power rather than data. The other two both support data, so you can pick whichever one best fits your setup. You'll also get two magnetic USB-C connectors, one to use now and another in case it goes missing. You can use this to snap your Piano M or Roly Piano to the Airwave using the front connector. A 65 watt power brick with an adapter for your region and also an adapter for a sustain pedal, particularly useful if you're using Piano M, which doesn't have its own sustain input. A lens cloth for cleaning Airwave's infrared cameras. We recommend only using this cloth as anything else may damage the lenses. And a QR code to start your journey. We'll connect Airwave to your keyboard in one of two ways, depending on which one you have. If you have a Roly keyboard that has a USB port on the back, you can use the included magnetic USB-C adapter to snap directly to the front ports of Airwave. If your Roly keyboard doesn't have a port on the back or you're using a third-party controller, connect directly to your computer using a USB cable. The USB-C ports on the back of Airwave are used for connecting it to your computer and to power if necessary. Airwave works with a single USB-C connection, but if you want to charge your piano while you're playing, you can connect the power adapter to the free port. We recommend connecting Airwave directly to your computer without the use of a USB hub. On the back of Airwave, you'll also find a headphone port with a 3.5 mm stereo output and a pedal port for connecting sustain pedals or expression pedals. When we first switch Airwave on, the LED at the top here lets us know what's happening. A pulsing white light means that Airwave is powered, but not recognized by the computer. A solid white light tells us that Airwave is both powered and recognized by the computer. To install the included software, we first need to download Roly Connect. You can do this either by going to roly.com start or by scanning the QR code in the box, which will guide you through the process from account creation, device identification, to downloading and installing your software. Once you've downloaded and installed Roly Connect, launch it and you'll see this page. We just need to enter our email. If you already have a Roly account, you'll be prompted for your password. And if you don't, you can sign up to make an account here. Next, we need to make sure that we register our Airwave in order to unlock the included sounds and software. To do this, make sure Airwave is connected to your computer and then head to the Devices tab. You'll see that your Airwave automatically pops up with its serial number and we can just click on register to register it. Once we've done that, you'll see that we have three apps available to install in Roly Connect. We have Roly Airwave Control, Roly Airwave Player, and Roly Dashboard. You should start by installing Roly Airwave Control, which installs all of the drivers and MIDI mappings necessary to use Airwave. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and install Roly Airwave Player by clicking the install button. Once you've installed both of these apps, just launch Roly Airwave Control, which will guide you through the final step, enabling the camera driver. Windows doesn't currently have multi-client MIDI support. It's coming in an update in late 2025, but until then, we recommend using a free utility called Loop MIDI. Just download and install Loop MIDI, click the plus icon to add a new port, and rename it to Roly Airwave Expression. That's it. So now we've got our hardware connected and we've launched Roly Airwave Player, you can see that my hands are being tracked on screen. But before we start playing, we just need to quickly calibrate in the app. To do that, I'm going to go to the cog icon in the top right corner of the UI and click on Calibrate. It will ask me to select the device that I'm calibrating, in this case the Roly Piano. So I'm going to click that and then it will illuminate two keys that we need to press to start the calibration process. I'm going to press them with my index fingers, hold them down, and then we're good to go. Airwave features six dimensions of air, 
which allow you to control sounds expressively using gestures. The first is air raise, and that's activated by moving your hands up and down. The second is air tilt, which is controlled by the tilt of your palm. We also have air glide, which can be activated by pushing your hands out in a side to side motion. Then we have air slide, which is a forward and back motion. Air flex, which is controlled at the wrist by flexing your hands down like that. And then finally we have air grasp, which is activated by making a fist. So now we're calibrated, we're ready to start exploring Roly Airwave Player and diving into some presets. You can see in the top left of the screen here, we have the name of the preset that we're currently playing, and I can click here to open and hide the preset browser. We have a list of all the presets available, and we can filter that list by favorites. So if I click this little heart icon at the top here, it will only show presets that I've favorited. And to favorite a preset, I can just go to the full list and click the little heart icon next to the preset that I want to favorite. We can also randomize using this little dice icon here, which will just give us a random preset from the list. And we can filter by tags. So for example, maybe I want a keyboard sound. I can find the keyboard icon in the instrument list here, click on it, and then I will only be shown sounds that are a keyboard sound. In addition to the dimensions of touch and the six dimensions of air, Every airway preset also has five assigned macros that all shape the sound in unique and interesting ways. And you can see these macro controls in the bottom left corner of the UI. There's a number of different techniques that we can use to get the most out of playing airwave. For example, if I'm playing faster lead lines, then I generally like to play with one hand on the keys, and then I raise my other into the air to explore the air dimensions. However, for more chordal playing, where I want to use both hands, we need a way of holding down some notes after we've played them to then allow us to raise our hands into the air to use the air dimensions. So we can do this one of two ways. The first way is with a sustain pedal. So I would just play some notes, hold down the pedal, and then raise my hands up to explore the air dimensions. Or if we don't have a pedal or we don't want to use one, we can use the hold feature in Roly Airwave Player. This can be accessed in the bottom right corner of the UI. And when the hold feature is enabled, all the notes that I play will be held down until I play some new ones, allowing me to express and hold notes without the use of a pedal. Roly Airwave Player allows us to customize the response of the air dimensions to suit our playing style and preferences. To do this, I'm gonna bring up the preferences menu by clicking the cog in the top right of the screen and clicking on preferences. When we're playing on the keys, we don't want the air dimensions to be active because then they'd be changing as we're kind of just moving around the keys. And to prevent that, we've created a boundary. This boundary will basically change the point at which the air dimensions start to be tracked. So if I want that a little bit higher, I can click in the UI here and drag up this bottom boundary, which means that I'll need to raise my hands higher away from the keyboard in order to start expressing the air dimensions. We also have sliders for each of the individual air dimensions that control the min and max values. So for example, if I find that the maximum glide is a bit too much of a range of motion and I wanna narrow that down a bit, we can take the air glide slider and bring the top half down slightly to reduce the range of motion we need to reach 100% air glide. Let's take a look at how we can record airwave in a DAW. Here, I'll be using Ableton. The air dimensions are sent to your DAW using a dedicated MIDI device called Roly Airwave Expression. To start with, I'm gonna grab the Airwave Player plugin and drag it onto a track of our choice as we would any other VST. In the MIDI input section here, we wanna make sure that we have all inputs selected so that we get the MIDI both from the keyboard itself and from the air dimensions from the Airwave. Then we can simply click record and play in as we would with any other keyboard.
When you've recorded a clip, just remember to disarm the track before you play it back. All of the airwave dimensions are sent continuously, so in order to hear what you recorded rather than what you're playing live, you need to disarm the track. All of the air dimensions are transmitted as MIDI CCs from MIDI CC 21 to 31. That means that we can find our clip and we can edit any of these points afterwards. So for instance here, I'm looking at my air raise values and I can just drag down each of these points if I want to edit my performance. Airwave Control contains all of the camera drivers and background services required for Airwave to work, but you can also use it for linking the air dimensions to parameters in third-party plugins and software. Because I'm in Ableton, first of all, I need to go into my MIDI device settings and make sure that the remote option for the Roly Airwave Expression device is selected. Then I can put Airwave into MIDI Learn mode, which will stop the continuous sending of all the dimensions. That allows me to then go into Ableton, activate the MIDI Learn feature, click a parameter I want to assign, and then go back to the Airwave Control app and send a particular dimension to link it to that parameter. Each of the air dimension is transmitted on a separate hand, so we could have a different assignment for our left hand raising versus our right. In this case, I'm going to send the raise of my right hand to control the parameter I selected. Then I can disable MIDI Learn in Ableton, disable it in the Airwave Control app, and then I have control of that parameter with the raise of my right hand. In order to maximize Airwave's hand tracking performance, there's some general practices that we should follow. Firstly, we wanna make sure that Airwave is positioned in the center of our keyboard. And remember, if you move your setup around, just run through the calibration process again before you start playing. You want to make sure that the infrared cameras here at the top of Airwave can always see your hands, so no big movements reaching out of view. And also try and avoid overlapping hands because then this hand's gonna be blocked from the cameras by the one above. Also remember that the air dimensions are all interlinked. So if I was to raise my hands up like this, I'm gonna be applying some air flex as well as air raise. So if I only wanna apply air raise, I need to remember to keep my hands kind of parallel to the keyboard and raise straight up. Similarly, air grasp is used to control the volume of sounds. So if we raise our hands with slightly curled fingers, then we're gonna already be applying some air grasp and therefore ducking the volume. So it's important just to remember to keep a flat, neutral posture unless you want to activate something like Rasp or Flex. You can control the air dimensions with either hand and the way it works is that the highest value will be tracked. So for example, if I'm doing a raise and I have my hands like this, because this hand is higher than this one, this will be the hand that's actively controlling air rays. But if that swapped over and this hand became higher than the other, this would switch to being the hand in control. We can also control different dimensions with different hands. So you might find it a little awkward to apply both tilt and flex at the same time. So you could raise hands up, apply tilt with one hand and flex with the other. And then you can kind of interchange the dimensions between the hands. Airwave is all about experimentation. So just explore the dimensions and you'll develop techniques and movements that feel natural to you. But a good thing to think about is the fact that usually air rays will bring in a kind of dramatic shift in sound and then the other dimensions will often add kind of modulation on top of that. So you'll have a big effect from raising and then a kind of secondary effect from tilting or flexing. There's fun techniques we can do with grasp as well. It's usually linked to volume control in the sounds. So we can either close our hands slowly to slowly reduce the volume, or sometimes we can do fast staccato movements to cut the sound in and out. I hope you found this video helpful and we can't wait to see what you create with Airwave. Join our community on Discord, you can grab the link from the description below. And we've got loads more content coming your way, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.